Welcome to Scramble Game Show. As usual, we have a guest tonight. Uh, before I introduce my guest, I would like to make a brief announcement. Uh, the Winter Scramble Tournament is coming, and we have chosen the uh, week during the school recess, as in February, uh, third week, is February uh, 15 to 22nd that week, as our tournament. And as uh, following the practice last year, we will have our championship played at the studio in Yorktown uh, Cablevision Studio. And the pre-tournament uh, games, we are taking a different format. We used to be uh, playing at a library in different places. Since we now have more people know how to play these games, we are now uh, having a very simple uh, honor system. That is, anyone who has played the game that has uh, a score record that is above 50 points is qualified to enter the tournament. And if you have not played before, you can just simply uh, play with anybody at a home, at a school, a library, or wherever. As long as you keep your score, and the score is about 50, you are qualified to enter the uh, tournament. To get more information about the tournament and the score sheet, you can visit the uh, website. Uh, it's at www.scramble.us. Okay, now we'd like to introduce our guest. We're very fortunate to have uh, Miss uh, Mickey Oliver, who is a historian in the town of Somers. And as you know, the uh, town of Somers is very, uh, it's an old town uh, historically, uh, has lots of interesting places and uh, stories. So today we're going to ask uh, Miss Oliver to tell us what, what she knows about our town. Ms. Albert, thank you for joining us. Uh, You're welcome, I'm sure. You know, the Scramble Game Show is a uh, uh, educational show that for kids and families, so our audience are basically uh, community families uh, near Yorktown, uh, Somers, uh, North Salem, general area. However, the show has been <clears throat> grown in the sense the broadcast has been propagating. So it's throughout the Westchester County and Putnam County, we have this show that is being broadcast on a weekly basis. So you, you'll be surprised, maybe. Uh, sometimes uh, people will tell you, uh, oh, I see you on television. So uh, welcome again. Uh, I'd like to ask you, uh, tell you stories, OK? And whatever uh, comes to your mind, just tell us about, since um, Many of the kids, of course, uh, they don't know anything beyond maybe 10 years. <laughs> so anything you tell is a very, very good story for them. Now first, let's uh, start with this little brochure. This is a brochure made by a, a, a Boy Scout, uh, Eagle Scout. Uh, we invited him uh, for, uh, uh, also as a guest, to tell us about the, his scout experience. It happened to be that this project he did relates to history, relates to uh, town of Somers. So I thought this is very fitting that I, I brought his brochure here, and maybe you could start from that. And he has uh, mentioned a few places, such as uh, the, the Musku Farm and the uh, Elephant Hotel. Uh, you know, of course, the middle school itself is an is a old uh, uh, building. So what comes to your mind that in Somers, what can you tell us? Well, should, should I, I start with, uh, with the Elephant Hotel, which is uh, probably the uh, um, most important structure in, in, the, indeed, in, the, in the town of Somers? Uh, um, uh, the story is that uh, uh, around uh, 1805, a man by the name of Hakaliah Bailey, mm -hmm. and we must not confuse him with the uh, James Bailey of the Bailey and Barnum Circus, uh, um, who came along much later, um, but he uh, um, he took um, old Bet on tour, and uh, <clears throat> that was so successful that he uh, um, acquired more animals, and he acquired uh, um, partners and he, and competitors, uh, uh, and so that by uh, um, 
by 1825, uh, um, his uh, um, circus business was, uh, uh, was thriving. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it was not called a circus at that time. The, the uh, people in Somers were more interested in the menagerie end of the I circus. Uh -huh. uh, they, they were interested in the, uh, in the animals. Uh, mm -hmm. he, first he acquired the elephant, and then he acquired a tiger, and then he acquired some monkeys mm -hmm. and some lions and mm -hmm. um, uh, things of this sort. Uh, uh, and it's always amazing to me uh, when you think ab about how these animals were imported uh, on sailing ships. Uh, yes. You know, can you imagine an right. elephant on a sailing ship? Right, uh, right, and across the ocean. <laughs> across the ocean uh, yeah. uh, from Africa and, and India, um, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes from South America. Um, but uh, Old Bat was killed in Alfred, Maine, uh, um, around 1815, and uh, uh, Hakaliah Bailey uh, um, came back to Somers and, and built the Elephant Hotel. Mm -hmm. uh, the Elephant Hotel has gone through many changes over the years. Uh, uh, it was a, uh, first it was a, it started as a hotel. Mm -hmm. uh, um, the uh, um, railroad, that bypassed uh, Somers in, in the 1840s, uh, so it kind of lost its uh, viability as a, as a hotel. So it became a, uh, a private residence, a tea house. Yeah. Uh, 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 the town eventually bought it in, in 1927. Uh, I see. Uh, and up until that time, the uh, um, various yeah. town officials had been uh, um, conducting their business uh, from their homes. Uh, and so they slowly moved into the uh, Elephant Hotel. Right. You know, first no. the first floor and, and mm -hmm. so on. Uh, yeah, now the, the, uh, the uh, Elephant Hotel has become a national uh, historical site. That's right. That's right. It's not only on the state and national registers of historic places uh, as part of a district. Uh, Recently, you mean this is? Uh, a but but uh, just about a year ago, mm -hmm. it was designated a a national uh, uh, monument, uh, mm. uh, which puts it on a par with uh, places like uh, the John Jay Homestead, Mount Vernon, the mm. Statue of Liberty. It, it's a oh, yes. that's it's very, a very yeah. very impressive designation. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. Um, there were, of course, other, there are, are other <clears throat> structures within the, the town that uh, um, might be of interest, uh, um, the Wright Reese Homestead, for instance. Uh, um, uh, Daniel Wright uh, came to what was uh, part of Somers, uh, uh, oh, in, uh, um, very, very early uh, um, in the in the life of the community, uh, um, and he built a uh, a, a small farmhouse uh, on on Primrose Street. Uh, um, uh, that uh, the property changed hands, and and uh, it went from the rights to uh, uh, William Marshall, who uh, um, built a much Grander house, uh, um, mm -hmm. a few yards up the up the road from the uh, um, from the uh, um, original house, uh, and and it is now <clears throat> and then the Marshalls sold it back to the Wright family. Uh, uh, Carolyn Wright Reese's uh, father was Samuel Wright, uh, uh, and Carolyn. Uh, his daughter, uh, when she had no children, uh, um, no cousins, uh, uh, no family left at all. So in, uh, in 1966, she deeded it. So uh, Carolyn is the one that uh, yes. deeded the yes. property to town. Right. Yeah. And uh, of course, most of it is now known as Reese Park. Right, uh, yeah. Uh, but the homestead uh, um, is um, separate from Reese Park at this point, uh, yeah. and it, it includes not only the homestead, but a number of outbuildings. Yeah, certainly uh, Reese Park is a, a very popular place for That's our right. residents here, and particularly for children. 
there's lots of sports activities and uh, the July 4th uh, fireworks and all this, mm -hmm. you know, so mm -hmm. a lot of people beyond uh, Somer is actually, they all know about That's Rispa. right, yeah. right. It has, right. A, it has a, a, a fine reputation. Right. Uh, um. and on the park, there's a, a small church that's also very old. Yes, Mount Zion Church. Mount Zion Church. Uh, um, uh, it's uh, one of the, the oldest Methodist churches in, in Westchester County. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. it, had, it was a very thriving little church. Uh, uh, unfortunately, the, when the reservoirs were created uh, mm -hmm. toward the end of the um, 19th century, uh, um, so many of the farmers had to move, uh, and uh, uh, it uh, the congregation uh, became smaller and smaller over the years and, until finally uh, um, mm -hmm. they stopped having uh, um, any services at all. Uh, the Methodist Church in, uh, um, in Katona held one service uh, a year uh, to keep it uh, off the tax rolls. Uh, oh, uh, I see. I had this though. Once a year, they have a service in that church. Yes, um, mm. un until uh, um, oh, <clears throat> a few years ago, uh, um, through the uh, um, auspices of mostly of Francis Billingsley, uh, mm -hmm. uh, the town acquired the uh, the property. Uh, the property with mm -hmm. the understanding that it would be. Uh, uh, kept as a as an as an historic site. I see. So right now the building is basically empty, and nothing in there, or is? Uh... Uh, yes, we um, the, the the church is used uh, um, for concerts. Uh, I see. For, yeah, for some music events. Yeah, you know. some uh, the uh, um, the third graders uh, um, visit um, the uh, homestead and Mount Zion Church each. Uh, each June, uh, mm -hmm. uh, at which time uh, um, they uh, see both the inside of the church and, and, the, uh, and visit the graveyard next to it. Uh, and the earliest gravestone is uh, um, 1729. Mm -hmm. So the Somers, uh, 150 years ago, is, uh, is basically uh, farmland and uh, That's right. we are this, this sort of a provider of, of, of farm goods to uh, New York City, basically. That's right. right? And uh, to this day, we still have this um, Musku farm. Yes. Is that part of the, you know, sort of the farm that uh, mm -hmm. sort of remained? Mm-hmm. Yes, we have uh, Musku farm and, and, and Stewart's farm. I think yes, they're the Stewart's only two, farm farms, two that, farms that, that are yeah. left. Uh, uh, Musku farm uh, um, started as a uh, um, a summer home for uh, um, Ferdinand T. Hopkins, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and he had his, uh, an apartment in uh, in Manhattan, and uh, he was a uh, had a pharmaceutical company. Uh, uh, the one of his famous products was the Mother Sills uh, seasick. Uh, oh, I see. <laughs> medicine. Uh, 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 ev eventually, the the family moved up. Uh, 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 to uh, um, to uh, uh, the farm, uh, uh, and and it was uh, bought by the uh, by Westchester County a few years ago, and, and is now a county park. Right. Yeah. And uh, children really enjoyed uh, visiting yes, that place. Yes, yes. They still have yeah. annually uh, uh, some kind of um, uh, small fair that brings uh, little animals, uh, mm -hmm. you know, as an exhibit, yes. and they have hay rides and so on. Yes. So it's very interesting for children, and particularly newcomers to town, uh, to Somers, that mm -hmm. is a place they mm -hmm. <laughs> must visit. Mm -hmm. And of course, it's a nice place, and really uh, next to the reservoir. Right. Yeah. And, and they have animals uh, in, the, in the blacksmith shop. Uh, right, right, right. Uh, yeah, I remember, <coughs> yes. You, you horses. Can, yeah, uh, mm -hmm. you, I think they have some kept some of these old, uh, either it's a chicken house or uh, that how the chicken was raised there and so on. Yes, yeah. and uh, and pigs and uh, cows. Right. Yes, it's yeah. it's a, it's a fascinating place, uh, yeah. uh, particularly for the children, uh, yeah. and they and they come from all over the county. So I, I understand that uh, you know a lot of uh, uh, older houses are part of a sort of farmer 
farm uh, uh, sort of a establishment, and including even your your own house. I understand your house part of your house was built in seventeen. Hundreds. Seventeen thirty-four. Oh, uh, seventeen seventy. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about that house? I mean, how is and it's well, kept so the, long. Well, uh, the uh, uh, then Cortland Manor, uh, which owned you know the man Somers was a part of the Van Cortland Manor, uh, and uh, in seventeen thirty-four the uh, um, the manor uh, was divided into. Uh, um, great lots, as they were called, and then each of the great lots was divided into farms of appro mm -hmm. approximately 230 acres. Uh, and the house on which my... Uh, uh, that, the that's uh, the near the present sort of middle school that's area? Right. That's right, yes, the yes, plot. yes. Yeah. We're, we're opposite the... Uh, um, middle school. Middle school. The mm -hmm. middle school actually, that property was originally part of the... This uh, of, parcel, yeah. Yeah, of uh, the uh, land that, uh, that I live on. Uh, um, and a man by the name of Abraham Brown, uh, mm -hmm. who was probably a tenant farmer, uh, and he built, uh, he built the house. And it's, I'm sure it started as a very tiny little house. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and... Uh, um, he, uh, the f the farmer uh, owned the house, but the uh, Van Cort Van Cortlands uh, um, owned the uh, um, the land. The they land. said they leased the land and built a house right, right. as a farmer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, the uh, the house just grew and, and grew and grew until finally it looked like a Victorian house. Mm. Uh, and at the end of World War II. Uh, um, one of the editors from the Reader's Digest uh, uh, bought the property uh, and was having some redecorating done. Uh, and uh, uh, the uh, painters uh, apparently put their uh, paint brushes and paint rags and tarps and cans of paint uh, in an upstairs closet. Uh, Oh, you mean in the attic? Yeah, in the, on the second floor. Second floor, I see. On, yeah. on the second floor. And in the middle of the night, uh, um, by spontaneous combustion, uh, it burst into flame. Uh, oh, yeah, that's shame, and, yeah. And, and so most of the uh, house was destroyed, nice. except for um, the two living rooms with their two fireplaces back to back and, and mm -hmm. the hallway. Uh, I see. And if you go into my house, you can still see the... Uh, the, uh, the original fireplace. Uh, yes, and the original hand-hewn beams, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, the uh, first two or three uh, uh, beams are still quite charred mm -hmm. from the uh, from the fire. So that the house uh, is, if by 1734, is one of the oldest uh, yes, houses yes. in, in well, Somers. Well, ju just what was saved. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting, very interesting. Mm -hmm. I mean, what, and you say uh, the Elephant Hotel was built in 18... Between 1820 and 1825. That's almost 100 years later. <laughs> yeah, yes, that's so, true. That's right. true. Mm -hmm. What are the properties uh, in, in, in the, this area that uh, you know, is of uh, interest and is pretty old? Well, there's the Stone House, uh -huh. uh, which uh, also has a circus history. Uh, it was built by Gerard Crane, who was one of uh, Hakali Bailey's contemporaries. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we know that it was built in 1749 because uh, um, there's a plaque in the uh, in the uh, in the basement uh, mm -hmm. with the, with the uh, date that it was uh, built, uh, yeah. 1749. Uh, um, the middle school is. Uh, um, was built uh, with funds made available through the uh, WPA uh, uh, during the Depression. Uh, I see. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the architect for it actually lived in Somers. Uh, oh, I see. What's his name? Can his name was uh, um, Gillard. Gillard. Mm -hmm. 
J A L L A D E Gerlade, and, and he lived on uh, on Primrose Street, uh, uh, not far from the uh, Wright Homestead. Uh. Oh, I see. Yeah. yeah. Well, now as you can see, that uh, we are running out, running out of the uh, land. Uh, the summer is quite, you know, sort of a developed, many developments that's going on every year. Um, even the school properties is, is uh, now sort of a, a sh shrinking, or rather uh, in proportional to the students they have, they don't mm -hmm. have enough land. So uh, we really have to preserve our, <laughs> you know, w w wide open space, otherwise we'll run out of space. Right, yeah. right. Well, I, I think we uh, uh, we were very very fortunate in <clears throat> in, in preserving the uh, um, what was known as the Eagle River property and is now known as the Angle Fly, Angle Fly property. Preserve yeah, uh, um, that that's uh, certainly open space. How, uh, roughly, how large that? Uh, Land oh, was. I think it's about seven. It's over seven hundred acres. Seven hundred uh, acres, yeah. Mm, right, yeah. In, right in the middle of town. Uh, right, that is impressive. Mm. And uh, yeah, I remember we actually invited one of the young <coughs> naturalist who uh, mm -hmm. uh, has uh, produced a, a video to show that property. And he, he's uh, being a naturalist. He has recorded uh, lots of these um, uh, animals and insects and mm -hmm. uh, you know, live off the property. Mm -hmm. It's very, very uh, beautiful. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So that's fortunate we, we have that uh, right. property. Right, uh, right. Plus. Yeah. I, I think one of the things that uh, uh, from um, the um, uh, town point of view, the school point of view, uh, I think the schools are you know, really uh, being crammed. Uh, I think uh, uh, as uh, populations continue to grow, uh, we're going to have a, a problem. Uh, we probably need another elementary school or, mm -hmm. or another, even another middle school. So I just wonder whether, is there any more properties that <laughs> we can uh, build on? Well, uh, offhand, I don't know of any, no. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's yeah. the difficult, yeah. So uh, perhaps the only way is that we will have to, uh, you know, sort of a, uh, somehow manage the growth, mm -hmm. not to uh, mm -hmm. overgrown too fast. Mm -hmm. yeah. w w which I think we're doing very, very well. Uh, uh, there were some people in the 1940s who had uh, foresight enough to uh, um, establish uh, some zoning laws, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. which has uh, worked very well over the years, uh, uh, and not. Too long ago, the uh, um, present administration uh, uh, increased the size of some of the uh, um, of the building lots. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Some from one to two acres, some from mm -hmm. even to three acres, uh, depending on the part of the town they were located in. Uh, right, right, right. So I, I, you know, I, I think. Uh, Somers is, uh, um, is trying very diligently to uh, uh, control the growth. Uh. Yeah, I think that's important because um, um, when, when the town is overgrown, it comes with a lot of problems. That's right. <laughs> usually. So right. Uh, it, it, it's better to have a, a planned growth and uh, you don't have these problems that are you know, sort of caught uh, in surprise. So, uh, in 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 the um, uh, neighboring town, okay. I mean, Somers certainly we have a lot of interesting uh, historical uh, sites and so on. In a, lab, lab, a neighboring town like Yorktown, uh, there's also quite a bit of history. Oh there. yes, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So perhaps uh, you know, I know uh, time flies very fast. Uh, we probably don't have time to uh, go into the other areas, but perhaps sometime we'll invite you back again. And uh, I know you are a member of a historic society, and perhaps inviting you and other members to uh, our show and talk about our neighboring towns. Mm -hmm. Certainly, like Cortland, Yorktown, these places, right? Right, right. right. Yeah. Cortland, Yorktown, and North Salem were all part of uh, um, the Van Cortland Manor. I see. I was, that's, yeah, yes. it was, it you know, was it divided. Covered, mm -hmm. It covered a big. Uh, 
uh, the, nor the northern tier of uh, towns in, in Westchester mm -hmm. County. So if people, uh, whether it's children or family or newcomers to town, they are interested in this kind of history, uh, where do they go to uh, read up on this or read up this type of? Well, the, uh, um, the Historical Society in, uh, in 1988 uh, published a book that's called Somers, Its People and Places. Mm -hmm. uh, um, the, uh, uh, it's no longer available for sale, but uh, there are copies of it at the Historical Society and in the public, Somers Public Library. Oh, uh, I see. And I think each uh -huh. of the schools has one. Uh, uh -huh. in the, it's called in, Somers? It's Somers, it's people and places. It's people and people places. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. I see. That's interesting. I have not read that book. I maybe uh -huh. I should go to the yes. library to borrow and, uh -huh. and read that book. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Any other uh, information that uh, the society keeps? Uh, at it? Well, the, this um, the Somers Historical Society has a, a very fine museum. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, the uh, museum is uh, um, exhibits are not only on the uh, on the top floor of the uh, Elephant Hotel, uh, but uh, in the uh, in the foyers uh, uh, and in the meeting room. Uh, mm -hmm. At the present time, we have a very uh, a fine exhibit of, uh, on the Elephant Hotel and its growth yeah. over the How years. How many members uh, in the society? Uh, in oh, I suppose uh, it's not a large society. I would mm -hmm. suppo su suppose about a hundred. Oh, that's quite a mm. bit, I mean, considering mm. we, our population is not yes, that big. Yes, yes. Well, right. I hope sometime we will uh, uh, invite you and uh, other members to join us and uh, you know, keep you know, dialogue on these uh, historical things. It's very interesting and fascinating. As I mentioned to you before, uh, I was reading a book about um, the uh, early days in the 1800s that people migrate from you know, east to west to California, so on, so to take the so-called wagon train, you know, traveling and so on. It's fascinating stories because mm -hmm. we now, uh, living in the modern world, you know, you take a, a jet plane and go to Los Angeles that's in a right. few hours, you don't feel that, uh, you know. Uh, so that's, that's really amazing if you can turn the clock back 100 years or 200 years. Mm -hmm. So uh, we are running out of time. So I, I thank you very much to, You're welcome. to be uh, our guest. It's been a pleasure. And, uh, yeah, we'll hope to see you again on our thank show. Thank you. Thank you. Well, um, we are fortunate to have uh, uh, Mickey Oliver as our guest today, and uh, she is uh, uh, a resource of history to us, and uh, we hope to invite her back again. Um, in the um, uh, interest of the time, uh, we will continue our show without stopping and uh, into our uh, scramble game show in the next uh, half hour. So stay tuned. Welcome back. Now we are going to play some scramble games. As uh, uh, last time, we introduced a new game. Uh, I call it a Scramble TLC Bridge. Uh, bridge game, as you know, that is uh, you know, uh, 
a uh, very popular game that has many, many uh, uh, followers uh, throughout the world and has a long history, probably a few hundred years. So playing bridge actually is uh, uh, considered an intellectual uh, game. Uh, bridge game has uh, basically two parts of significance. One is a, a bidding process. Uh, one, of course, is playing the cards to win the tricks and fulfill the contract. And the bidding process is to uh, establish a contract. So this game would involve uh, a partnership uh, and an understanding of, of so-called convention. Uh, so you could bid a particular contract based on the cards you have and your partner has uh, against your opponents. And uh, uh, this game, uh, as I said, uh, is very, very uh, popular and probably is ranked, could be ranked as uh, number one, number two uh, card games in the world. Now, following the scramble game that, uh, you know, the spirit uh, always trying to uh, create a game that based on a familiar game rules of uh, such as poker, mahjong, or bingo, uh, we now have uh, created